Here we go. Rhino coming up. I'm going to scoot a little closer. And it, it's all relative, and frequency is more important than intensity, to be honest with you. that uh, When I talk about movement, you know, now the, the research shows that, that taking a 40-minute walk at the end of the day is not as effective as taking three or four 10-minute walks throughout the day. Your body wants to be moved. It wants to be moved often. The blood is the life force. It heals. It repairs. Uh, it's the more you can get your body to move through, you know, a, a significant range of motion, get some blood flow. It's just a brisk walk. Uh, like I mentioned before, I put that recumbent bike in my room and I do those uh, hip training with a little bit of tension uh, every few hours throughout the day to recover from big squat sessions. If you can get blood in there, even more recently, my knees, you know how bad they've been for years. Uh, I started training legs three days a week using banded leg presses. Um, high rep sets and uh, my knees were fantastic. Just the other day for the first time in years I was able to squat 500 for 10 reps without any knee pain. And wow. It's not the weight necessarily that I'm concerned about. It's the fact that it, it, my, my, my patellar tendons have healed and strengthened to the point now where 500 for 10 doesn't hurt anymore. It's not the limiting factor. I used to squat about as heavy and hard as I could until my knees got so sore that I had to limp out of the gym. And mm -hmm. I finally, you know, backed up, lowered the weight, implemented some lower impact uh, type exercises through a greater range of motion uh, with more frequency. And now I'm stronger than I have been, what I call my PRPR, my post-retirement PRs. I'm stronger and healthier than I've been in five years. Yeah, that's awesome. And you're 48, 49? 49, I'll be 50 this November. Damn, that's crazy. You know, a lot of people uh, use the excuse of having kids and having a job. You have both of those things as well. Yeah, but th here's the thing. If you do this and you do it smart, it takes less time. If you prep your meals, that takes less time than going to a restaurant waiting for a meal and eating it. And it saves you more money. And when I go to the gym now, I try and get a bigger return on my investment. So I try and use the kinds of exercise that maximize both hypertrophy and strength as well as cardiovascular training. And that's why I implement the hit under loads. That's why I do weighted carries uh, because I can adjust the rest times. I can adjust the, the, the number of reps that I do, the amount of weight that I do, uh, and keep my heart rate elevated, but I'm still putting my body under load. So I'm not losing any strength. Uh, from doing those kinds of exercises. And then, it's like the other day when you were doing those walking lunges, that 100-pound dumbbell, you're gasping for air when you're done, but that's not cardio per se in the traditional sense. That's not steady state stuff. You're not losing any muscle tissue. You look fantastic. You're getting ripped, uh, staying big and strong. Uh, you just have to get a bigger return on your investment by using the kinds of exercises that, that puts your body under load and makes your heart work to fuel that movement. Have you noticed, um, this This is uh, something I've noticed quite a bit, and maybe you've noticed something similar. It seems like the more that I do, the more that I can handle. Have you noticed that yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Like just in all aspects of life, like helping my kids with something or, uh, you know, running to the gym to do something quick or running into a meeting or, or whatever it might be. It seems like the less I do, the less interested I am in doing just about anything. And the more that I do, the more I end up doing, and the easier it is to get through all that shit. Yeah, you, you find the same thing when people gain weight. It's that the, more, the more they sit around, the more they want to sit around, the more tired they get. The less you sleep, the more you want to sleep. Uh, or even the more you sleep, the more you want to sleep. The more tired you are all the time. It's like a snowball rolling down a hill, and it just gets bigger and bigger. And it can happen on the bad side, or it can happen on the good side. And I found the same thing. The heavier you get and the less you do, the more tired you are all the time. Uh, the more I do, uh, the more often I do it, and the more energy I have. And I've noticed, I've noticed you notice that with the loss of the weight in particular, is that the energy is, is, a, is an amazing thing. And when, the first thing I ask people, they say they just lost 30, 40 pounds. And, you, know, you must feel great. And I go, oh, my God, the energy is amazing. The more you move, the more energy you have. Yeah, I feel I feel awesome, and it's uh, you know huge thanks to you. You've always been a huge help 
Uh, he helped me uh, through through many different uh, situations in and out of the gym. So I really appreciate it, man. Yeah, well, you know, it's just from experience. I've been through it. I've lived through it. I know how horrible it feels to, to be tired all the time, to be too heavy or to not you know, be doing, having enough activity. Uh, and I've found the remedy to that is really quite simple. And so I just keep sharing the same really easy solution. And that's the thing. We get in to talk about these tests, and we're talking about AST and AOT and alanine aminotransferase and whatever else. You can sit here and barf up all kinds of uh, big names and stuff you learn from a textbook and try and, you know, show everybody how smart you are. But over and over and over again, it's the simplest things that make, have made me the most, got given me the biggest results. Right. And I, I, it's boring to talk about sleep, but somebody will spend two hours or three hours lifting. I was just at a seminar and Eddie Cohn and I had, uh, went through and showed people about their squat, bench, and deadlift. And we spent probably four hours or greater, everybody you know, working on their technique and their form and their breathing and the, the bar position and the um, activating the lats and you know, all this other stuff that we kept talking about. And they just soaked it up. And I wonder how many of them will go home and really understand that night the most important thing they can do and will they go down the list and turn off their TV and their telephone so that they don't fuck up their circadian rhythms, make sure that they get to sleep, uh, you know, an hour or two before midnight so that their body can, so they can get great sleep, that they can wake up at the same time every day, that they sleep in a dark room, that they sleep in a cool room, that they use a CPAP if, uh, if they have any breathing problems. And understand that that, what I just said, will probably increase their bench <laughs> way more than, than 10 seminars with me and Eddie Cohn. Yeah, way more than just uh, tucking your elbows into your sides. Yeah. I can't agree with that. You know, I can't agree with that more. It makes tons of sense. Yeah. Simple, simple stuff. We watch videos of all these great lifters and try and get technique. Uh, just like I said on your, your, your podcast, a couple years ago, if you're sleeping five hours a night and taking creep, you're a fucking idiot. You're <laughs> stepping over hundred dollar bills to pick up nickel. And I see it all the time. It has the same thing to do in my mind with the quality of the foods and your meal frequency, meal prep. You know, you end up going six, eight hours without a meal and, and uh, you know, you're losing productivity, I think, that your body certainly really needs. Yeah, and for me, it all starts with planning. You know, I can, um, you know, because I coach everybody here at the gym, and uh, I'm involved in a bunch of different things uh, in promotion of, of the products from the gym and everything else. Uh, I could sit here and drag my feet in the gym and and end up here for hours, uh, or I can get home and get to the shit that I'm supposed to do. You know, and that's that's resting from the workout. You know, having a good strong workout, having fun while I'm in the gym making sure my other guys are on track, getting in and out of here in a fast and convenient uh, way, but then also getting home and getting to my food, my liquids, and getting the rest that I need. If I, if I dick around in the gym for an extra hour, that's an hour that I'm taking away from my sleep or an hour that it's, gets taken away from my kids and, and so on. And so I think that's when people feel like they're too busy is when they drag on and they end up doing, doing some things uh, that they're maybe not supposed to be doing, hanging out on Instagram or social media in some way. And uh, they're not thinking about, oh shit, you know, I could spend an extra 10 minutes on preparing my meal so that I don't eat the wrong thing again and go off my diet once again instead of uh, hitting up McDonald's on the way home from the gym or whatever, whatever the case may be. I think that's where people are making the biggest mistakes is uh, there's a lot of turns during the course of the day and people are cutting a lot of corners. Yeah, the workouts, in my mind, obviously I've said they're just the stimulus. They're hugely important, but how good that workout is depends on how well you prepare for it and how well you recover from it. And those things, to me, are far more important. And then the workouts are easy. I show up to the gym, and, and it's easy to kill it. But if I've recovered well and right. prepared well, then that's those, those workouts are fun. Those the workouts are great. Some of these people that are listening are, are probably uh, pretty young, and uh, they're probably not going to 
get their blood work done. Uh, they probably, a lot of them aren't using performance enhancing drugs. Um, a lot of them feel healthy, a lot of them are young, and so they feel invincible. <clears throat> you have any words of advice on some things that, you know, maybe you would have done differently when you were younger? You have any words of advice that some things that may be a little bit simple for some of these guys to implement? Yeah, I mean, the big thing is that they want to progress and they want to get bigger and they want to get stronger. And, uh, and they're going to have to be consistent. They're going to have to train hard. They're going to have to eat well. And, you know, that's one of the biggest things that I learned. The training was kind of the easy part. Eating enough, often enough, and enough good foods is really, you know, where it's at. And look at the micros as well as the macros. And, uh, because deficiencies in things like vitamin D, magnesium, zinc, iron, uh, if you know if you're training hard and you're not eating enough food, you might have deficiencies there, and that'll absolutely stop your growth. Right. So, yeah. So even if you're not like really concerned about your health, you should probably just go get your blood work done anyway, so you can find out some more of that stuff, so you can make progress faster. Well, that's why I did it. And yeah. I also found that the cleaner I ate, the more I was subjecting myself to potential deficiencies, because clean for a lot of people just means boneless, skinless chicken breast. <laughs> And broccoli, or right. you know, they start minimizing the the, the uh, variety of foods that they eat, uh, and they might minimize calories to the point where now they're compromised the potential to recover and gain muscle. So, calories can be a, a huge thing, obviously, for growth. But you know, and I said before, it, it, and I'll, I'll say it over and over again: it's you're far better off eating more food and increasing your workload if you want to get lean as opposed to decreasing your calories. Right. Too detrimental. Yeah, you're, just, you're going to lose muscle, and that's not the direction of the... I think 99% of people listen to this, whether they're uh, bodybuilding figure, physique, bikini, powerlifting, strong man. I don't think anybody listening to this wants to lose muscle. <laughs> no. Rhino, thank you so much, man. You're the man. Uh, just uh, a wealth of knowledge. Really appreciate it, and uh, we'll catch you later. Yeah, thanks, Big. Talk to you soon. All right, man, later. Bye. So there you have it. I mean, you can see uh, why that guy has had such an impact on my life. You can see how beneficial. I know, I, I understand, like, that was that's a long phone call. You know, we, we were talking for a while there. Um, but I wouldn't have gone over the information, A, if you guys didn't ask for it, and B, uh, if I didn't think it's important. Stan the Rhino Efforting is a savage. He's a beast. Make sure you're following him on Instagram. I'm at Mark Smelly Bell. Strength is never a weakness. Catch you all later.